So thank you for the introduction. And uh, I'm very happy to be here to talk about the 5G modem RF deep dive. So uh, this presentation is divided into two parts. I will be talking about the modem. And with me is Max Rodriguez. Uh, he is RF marketing manager. He will be covering uh, the RF front end section in the latter half of the presentation. So let me start uh, by saying that on the modem side, uh, actually, I have two objectives there. We've seen uh, like very great talks so far on the future looking like 6G and the AI aspects. But let me bring it back down to the product now. I know Francis, in the previous panel, just touched upon the X70, uh, our latest 5G modem RF platform. I'll go deep into the uh, X70 and really talk about some key modem RF features that we've introduced in the X70. And then as I go through the features, I want to give the audience a good sense of what Qualcomm believes is how modem RF should come together to enable 5G in smartphones as well as beyond smartphones, in segments like XR, uh, enterprise networks, as well as uh, uh, fixed wireless access. So that being said, uh, let's see. Before we actually jump into the X70, I want to give just a brief uh, history of how we got here. So starting with the X50, uh, which Qualcomm was uh, leading the work in 5G back in 2017, we announced the world's first 5G modem RF solution. And this enabled or set the stage for 5G deployments by supporting NSA millimeter wave, so non-standalone millimeter wave, non-standalone TDD, and the very first generation of uh, millimeter wave antenna modules. Then with X55 uh, in 2019, we introduced the world's first multi-mode integrated 5G modem. This supported all technologies from 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and millimeter wave, and added different modes like standalone uh, mode in, together with non-standalone. And standalone mode is big in China and getting more traction now all over the world. And we also added support for TDD, FTD spectrum, and 5G, 4G spectrum sharing. So with the X55, you can see that operators really started taking 5G seriously into the deployment stage. And, we saw, and we've seen like an acceleration of 5G deployments and 5G devices since 2019. Then as 5G matured, we introduced X60, which supported uh, 3GPP release 16 uh, 5G, and introduced more sophisticated features like carrier aggregation, and not only on the sub-6, but also on sub-6 and millimeter wave. So, and it was also the world's first 5 nanometer 5G baseband. So, after the X60 came in X65, which was just last year, and this was the world's first 5G modem to take 5G speeds to 10 gigabits per second. So that's an enormous uh, jump for 5G. And it also was the world's first modem to introduce 3GPP release 16. It also introduced Qualcomm wideband envelope tracking. And in continuing with our millimeter wave progression, we introduced the fourth generation millimeter wave antenna modules. So now uh, let's move to the X70. And I think you saw this slide in the last presentation, so I don't need to say much. But again, X70 is the world's first modem RF 5G AI processor. So really taking 5G into a different dimension with AI, and we just saw the discussion with AI. A lot of excitement around AI. And it continues to support 10 gigabit 5G, just like X65. But here's the thing. It's the world's only modem RF platform to support all 5G bands, right from 600 megahertz up to 42 gigahertz. Now, as you can imagine, there is a lot of complexity in the device to support all these different RF bands. So RF characteristics are very different from the low bands to the high bands. So this means the RF front end in terms of amplifiers, the envelope trackers, the pH, everything needs to be designed differently for these bands. 
And the other thing is 5G has a lot of bandwidth, right? So when we say sub-6, each band can be up to 100 megahertz wide. In millimeter wave, the total aggregated bandwidth can go up to 800 megahertz. So the, all this complexity, both on the RF front end as well as on the modem processing side, needs to be managed very carefully. And what I mean by carefully is what we believe, Qualcomm believes the right way to do it is with modem RF co-design, modem RF awareness with algorithms designed to enable 5G across different segments. So I am going to cover some of these key modem RF features which we believe are enabling 5G, like we said, across different segments. So the very first one is Qualcomm 5G AI Suite. Now this feature, like we said, it is enabling breakthrough real world 5G performance. And it really rests on these four pillars. And we touched upon this briefly in the previous uh, panel. So AI-based adaptive antenna tuning, AI-based network selection, AI-based millimeter wave beam management, and AI-based channel state feedback. So as you can see, this is touching components from both the RF side, which is the antenna tuner, as well as the baseband to do things like network selection and to learn, really learn more about the channel conditions, refine our knowledge of the channel, and then use that knowledge to deliver real world benefits in terms of user experience, in terms of higher throughputs, and in terms of higher coverage. So as you can see on this chart, AI-based channel state feedback is able to increase throughputs by up to 26% at cell edge. That's a huge increase, purely based on modem-centric information and intelligence. Similarly, on millimeter wave, you can see it expands coverage of millimeter waves significantly, and that has a direct impact on user experience. Now moving on to the next modem RF feature, this is the Qualcomm Smart Transmit 3.0. So X70 introduces Smart Transmit 3.0 and really expands the scope of the Smart Transmit 3.0 by introducing Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios into the mix. But as you can see, it's 3.0, so we've done a lot of work before we reached here. In fact, Smart Transmit is an innovative technology driven by, it's a homegrown technology which we then took to regulators, took to standards, and have enabled uh, Smart Transmit adoption in premium devices which are available right now all across the globe. So how does this technology work? It's a unique modem RF system level technology. It is designed with modem RF awareness and it really works across the entire set of technologies. Like I said, now X70 introduced Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but in the second generation, we were already supporting 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and millimeter wave technology. And the unique thing about this technology is that it looks across all multiple antenna sets, and using modem RF awareness, it's doing averaging in time and space across the multiple antenna groups to determine what is the optimum transmit power. And as you can imagine, transmit power is really key to user experience. If you're more backed off, then you're actually losing throughput and coverage, but at the same time, you have to meet the regulatory limits. So Smart Transmit does this in an intelligent way, and now with integrating all these technologies under the umbrella of Smart Transmit, we enable higher throughputs a much stronger link coverage, and we're doing this, we're able to do this all dynamically in real time. And covering some of the more uh, uplink enhancements on X70, uh, you can see we are doing this on both millimeter wave and sub six. So let's start with millimeter wave first. The headline number, 3.5 gigabits per second uplink. That's unprecedented for a mobile device. We do this by combining millimeter wave and sub-6 spectrum. So with a technology called dual connectivity, which is standard space, but we are doing it, and we introduced it uh, in X70. Then on sub-6, 
uh, X70 is capable of supporting release 16 switched uplink. This is a newer technology which builds on top of release 15 carrier aggregation. So really what this enables is the device can, when it can get the best of both worlds, TDD and FTD. So if you're close to the cell, you can be transmitting on TDD. And then when you're not transmitting on TDD, you can actually switch to FTD in real time. And if conditions are uh, such that you can use carrier aggregation, you can be transmitting both FTD and TDD at the same time. So all this requires careful, again, coordination between modem and RF so that you can switch from TDT to FTD quickly. And again, you also need to be talking to the network, and that's what Qualcomm has always been so good at. We have relationships with infra vendors, and we work together with them to test our devices, to enable them and launch them globally. Right? So release 16 switched uplink is yet another example of how we design our modems to work across networks and to enable new technologies. So X70 will support release 16 switched uplink. And again, look at this. We support 100 megahertz envelope tracking, right? So as we continue to increase throughputs, we also continue to invest in ways where we can reduce power consumption so that the user experience is not sacrificed. You get more throughputs, faster connections, but at the same time, you get a longer battery life. And now this is a very interesting feature. Uh, it's global multi-SIM, dual SIM, dual active. Uh, this is, the, actually X70 introduces the second generation of DSTA. And taking a step back, what is DSTA and how does it benefit the user? It's not that common here in the US or for that matter, Japan or Korea, but dual SIM devices in general are very popular in regions like China, India, and Latin America. And DSDA in particular is a market requirement in China, which is why we first introduced it in X65. And now we are adding 5G plus 4G support on X70 to broaden the scope of DSDA. But what DSDA really brings to the table is uh, for a device with DSDA, if you have a device with two SIM cards, you can connect to two networks. So say SIM 1 here in the US could be connected to Verizon, and SIM 2 could be connected to AT&T. And a device with DSTA can actually connect to both networks at the same time. Now, in order to appreciate what, it, what this really means, a device without DSDA will be able to talk to only one network at a time. So if you're on a voice call on, say, Verizon, you miss the call on the second SIM. But with a device with DSDA, you can have two sessions running in parallel. And the most common use case that is very popular in China is supporting data plus voice. So if I'm playing a game or browsing, typically it's a gaming session on SIM 1. If my friend calls me on SIM 2, I can still pick up the phone, continue the gaming session. So this is actually two different networks, right? So there's two different networks, two different sessions going on together at the same time. So this requires, as you can imagine, a lot of complexity, both in the modem and the RF front end. This is not simple to do. It's like you buy one X70, but you're getting two modems. And you're running two RF front ends at the same time. So this has huge implications for cost of the device, power of the device, and then while the user is moving and I'm continuing to play my game, what if I move to a band which does not support concurrency across two networks? So you have to manage how the user experiences while moving in and out of DSDA coverage. So all this requires careful coordination, co-design between modem and RF. And in fact, we work very closely with our OEM partners to and provide them guidelines on how to design the RF front end so that DSTA is enabled in the best possible way. So this is really a lot of complexity that we are taking on and addressing with X70. And back to my earlier point, X70 is introducing the second generation DSTA. So now we are adding 5G plus 4G support, which means that, uh, so X65 supported 5G plus 5G, 
which means that I can be on 5G on one network and 4G on the second network. So at the end of the day, what this really means to the user is that the user can enjoy DSTA experience in more places. So that's the benefit of uh, the X70 DSTA. Moving on, the next feature is Qualcomm 5G Ultra Low Latency Suite. Now, this is a modem-centric feature, but we wanted to highlight it because latency is becoming more and more critical, especially as we talk about different segments. Gaming is, of course, hugely popular, but even segments like XR, AR require low latency, and our OEMs demand low latency because people are gaming more and they want a snappier response. So how does this work? Uh, this really accelerates modem, uh, the latency sensitive traffic within the modem. And it is need based as in depending upon the needs of the application, we provide hooks to our OEM partners to enable different levels of acceleration. So if you require a much faster response time, we actually have a mode and there are trade-offs that the OEM can take care of while enabling these different levels of acceleration and improving latency within the modem. And of course, uh, you see uplink uh, pre-configured grant mentioned there. So together with modem-centric enhancements to improve latency, we continue to invest and deliver on standards-related features like uplink uh, pre-config grant, again, with the goal of improving user experience through faster and lower latency. Now, in the next couple of slides, just going to touch upon uh, how 5G is enabling different segments through our innovative modem RF features, right? So the very first segment is fixed wireless access, and we've seen a number of speakers here at the summit talk about fixed wireless access. It is one of the fastest growing segments enabled by 5G. And one of the key innovations that we bring to the table is support for eight receive antennas. So at the CPE device, which is sitting in your home with eight receive antennas, you see an enormous extended range. And with that, the service provider can actually serve more users at a lower cost. And you can see, we have numbers which show that the capacity of the network goes up by 26%. The coverage goes up by 35%, and user experience can go up by 30% because of the support of eight receive antennas. So all in all, this is a win-win. We are investing in technology that is enabling 5G in newer segments, such as fixed wireless access. And this is sub-6. The next slide shows how we are also enabling FWA on millimeter wave. So we now have standalone 5G millimeter wave technology available so that, now this really opens up a completely new uh, possibilities for operators and service providers. Like with millimeter wave only spectrum, you don't have to rely on a sub six anchor. And you can think of like new services, new business models that you can deploy in things like fixed wireless access as well as private networks. So uh, this is the core 5G promise that we are delivering on by enabling these newer features, which are, again, not simple to do. They, like millimeter wave only network is something that requires, again, a lot of intelligence and smartness, both on the modem and RF to deliver. So this was really my last slide on the modem RF features. Uh, And in this slide, wanted to uh, highlight that X70 is built with security in mind as well. So in addition to providing like superior connectivity, we take security as a high priority. And if you look at all the touch points of security, right from a secure boot up to connection security, where we are protecting against fake base stations, and uh, uh, file system security, where we protect OEM, carrier, and user data, right to diagnostic security. So if you're trying to debug something, there is protection of the crash dump itself. 
So yes, X70 is the world's first 5G modem AI processor, and it's really designed to deliver a secure, fast, reliable connection. So that is where I end my modem part and hand it over to Max. Thank you, Kanu. And good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to me to be here today. So it's also my first 5G summit. Very excited to be here. So we heard a lot now about the modem. I will speak to you now about the RF part. So my topic is RFFE. So RFFE stands for radio frequency front end, and is a critical piece in our modem to antenna solution. So we have a unique modem to antenna solution which is designed to benefit the entire wireless ecosystem. And I'll speak more about that. So we are the only one vendor offering a complete modem to antenna solution. We claim performance leadership and scalability across product categories. And with 5G, we have the time for the RF front end to shine. So we have a significant traction. So we heard about the addition of radios, the addition of frequencies, so this huge amount of uh, RF that needs to be managed and addressed, and for this you need, of course, a very effective RF front end, and you need components. So the numbers here is just to exemplify the traction that we have, and at this moment we are the number one RF front end vendor in the market. So. Simply said, the RF front end you see here in the middle, so in blue, picturized, it's the circuitry located between the modem and the antenna and dealing with the transmitting and receiving signals or managing these signals efficiently. So I have a few of the components here, so I will not go through all of them, but I would like to emphasize specifically on our antenna tuner. And Francis was so kind and uh, speaking about that with the support of AI that we have just added on top of it. So it's important to emphasize that a modern, I would say a 5G phone has several antennas. So we speak up to seven antennas. And the utilization of this, it's essential, it's key. So we have a system where we claim double digit performance with our antenna tuner. So this increases coverage, this brings better performance, and of course, this saves also energy battery. So we have a millimeter wave. We just added artificial intelligence on top of that. So we just heard about this So in the previous sessions. So we extend the coverage, we increase the throughput. So millimeter wave is working fine. And we are in the fourth generation already. And we have our wideband envelope tracking, so which is uh, amazing technology. I like it personally very much because it saves power in the sub-6 and it increases battery life. So we claim up to 30% savings in comparison to average power trackers with our latest um, version of the envelope tracking. So I'm coming from Munich and this is where we create and develop our future technology. And of course, I mean, I will speak about more about this. Um, a 5G phone can have up to 90 filters and they need a 5G phone. They need to be tightly integrated, tested, and work seamlessly together in a system. So all in all, we lead that. So we have a performance leadership, and this is how we move ahead with our RF front end. As I said, best-in-class features, I just mentioned some of them. And we have a system-level integration and co-design, which is unmatched, as we have the entire modem to antenna solution. So we see here some of the radio technologies, the 5G on the top, but we also deal with the legacy RF technologies, and we have even new radios on top and the new Wi-Fi's, 6, 6E, and 7 just arriving. So we heard about positioning, we also addressed that, and everything goes through our RF front end system, which is highly optimized to outperform. So we see here some of the key benefits. Yeah, of course, I mean, I've been talking about the advantages, the, the performance, but of course, what's the trade-off? Faster time to launch, essential for OEMs to bring new devices into the market, saving money, time is money, and this budget can be addressed in other areas, like increasing the marketing budget, for instance. So we have smaller form factors, so the PCB area, it's limited, 
So this needs to be highly utilized, and we have the possibility to do that. So with our solution. We have improved thermal performance, so we keep the heat under control. We have state-of-the-art packaging technologies, which allow us to add more components into the modules, but to keep the generation of heat under control. And of course, using this, this, the form factor efficiently. And we cre increase coverage as well. So I just spoke about the antenna tuner, so where we are able to do that for the subsets, but we also address this for the millimeter wave, utilizing AI. We have power consumption under control, so we increase battery life. I just mentioned the figures that we can deliver with our, with our solution, and this is key. So power control, we're talking about 5G, several radios, and higher frequencies. And at the end, we have high throughput rates. So Kano just spoke about the 10 gigabits per second and the high values that we have in the uplink as well. So, and this is all in a system. So you see here the picturization with the smartphone, as I said, so unmatched in the industry right now. And we are a critical part in our modern rep system solution. I said that I'm gonna speak about filters, and here we are. So we claim an industry-leading filter portfolio, so we have the entire frequency range from five megahertz up to 7.2 gigahertz with our filter technology. And we have a very strong traction with our solution as well. So we have introduced our Qualcomm Ultrasol filter technology about three years ago, and this is already shipping and has a very strong traction. So you just saw a few figures before. So this is uh, being adopted in several 5G phones nowadays. But we are also addressing the higher bands. So we have introduced the Qualcomm Ultra Ball filter technology, which is also a high performing solution. And it's interesting to mention this due to the fact that in this frequency range, so we have the coexistence with the new Wi-Fi's. So the selectivity is key here. So we have Wi-Fi in the five gigahertz coexisting with new 5G and R bands, and the filters need to operate seamlessly. So they need to operate very selective and efficient. And we see here also where we are. So the blue lines show essentially where we are performing in comparison to competition. So again, we are leading here with the full portfolio. So I spoke about smartphones. I spoke about the solution, so the integration, so the uniqueness that we have, the advantages. But we are expanding. So we are going beyond mobile. So this is already part of our strategy, so we are following that. And with our RF front end, it goes the same way. So automotive is one area that we are addressing with our solution. So telematics, there is uh, other requirements for that, but we fulfill them with our system. We have Wi-Fi connectivity where we have modules for the new Wi-Fi's, but we also allow the coexistence with the new 5G and R. Fixed wireless, can we just mention this? So some of the advantages of having our fixed wireless in the sub-6 and also in the millimeter wave, and we are ready for this. Computer, ACPCs, I just mentioned coexistence between 5G and Wi-Fi. This is very important to emphasize, and it's an area which has a huge potential for us. XR. So the ticket to the metaverse, we heard a few times about that. And we have a reference designs with our FFV for this in place and IoT. So such a huge area, such a broad area. I think I could speak another session just about IoT and the application for that, right? So, but we are ready for this. So we are a modern RF system. I would like to call my colleague Kanu here back to the stage because we only coexist together right? It's not only modern, but it's a ref. <laughs> <laughs> and we are expanding beyond mobile. So there is a huge potential ahead of us. And with that, I would like to close the session. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you.